My name is Steve Johnson. I'm also known as the Forsaken Warrior. Um, I live in, I currently reside in Chicago. I was born here as well, so born and raised. Um, living here on the north side of Chicago, uh, training here at various gyms all over Chicago, mainly a gym called Chicago Style Fitness, which is on the uh, northwest side of Chicago. Um, local kind of underground gym and, uh, and that's it. Like, what was your, like, I want to know, like, about your childhood, like, where you came from, like, do you have a sports background? Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah. Like, he's got uh, a very extensive sports background. And I know, I can see the story. trophies and all that shit behind you guys. Why don't you tell us a bit, a bit about that? Yeah, that right there behind us, that's our wall of fame right there that we started. That's uh, various trophies and uh, awards that we've had in powerlifting and Lauren and, and uh, bodybuilding and stuff, so... Um, it's not all up. I've got a shadow box with five medals of Steve's, but I kind of fucked it up a little, and so I um, I have yet to hang it up back up on the wall. I yeah, saw that stuff on, looked perfect, online. Though. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was uh, raised in Chicago. Um, I'm one of four kids, and I'm the oldest in my family, two brothers and a sister, uh, 32 years old. Um I played uh, some sports back in uh, a little bit in high school, but mainly outside of high school. I'm a former fat kid. Um, basically, I started weightlifting just to lose weight, and uh, you know, shit got kind of crazy and out of hand. And I discovered powerlifting, and and you know, I kind of had that like farm that farm boy blood in me yeah. that uh, was able to transform into some amazing strength. You know. Uh, I'm How old were you whenever you found powerlifting? Um, I was, when I started powerlifting, or when I started, like, kind of figuring out what powerlifting was, it was only about uh, 2012. That's when I figured out, um, I, I my first ever person I really started following was uh, Stan Efferding. And then um, I, from Stan Efferding, following everything that he was up to and what he did, kind of what his workout protocol was, because he was, you know, as the world's strongest bodybuilder. Um, I was interested in his physique as well. So I never wanted to like, I wanted to be strong, but I didn't want to be fat, which was what I thought power lifters were, um, when I first, you know, <laughs> figured that out. So, um, I started following Stan more, um, started looking at his, his, like mainly his deadlifting stuff because, uh, deadlifting was like something that I kind of fell in love with right away in powerlifting and kind of exceeded at. Um, and just one day, you know, I was like, I'm going to, I'm just, I saw him pull like 837 and a half pounds, which I just did at the Fit Expo. And I told myself I was going to do that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was incredible. And to have him there also, whenever you did it. Yeah. That was awesome. I know the looks on, I like watching the video of me opening with 804 and everybody, uh, kind of like had that what the fuck look on their face, how fast I pulled it as an opener. Um, you know, so I uh, I actually don't have a long history in powerlifting. I started, uh, I really started powerlifting in 2015 as like in a sanctioned meet. That was my first ever one. Uh, before that, I had done like a bunch of like um, what I would call backyard meets, just kind of like a gym held, a local gym hold, held like, you know, just a powerlifting meet that, you know, nobody sanctioned did or anything like that. And I just... Um, you know, was like, you know, they just kind of had like all the bros there. Let's see who the strongest one is, you know. And, uh, you know, I decided I wanted to do a powerlifting meet. So I did one here in Aurora, Illinois, 2015, my first ever one. Um, once I decided that I felt like I was ready enough. And that was after stalking various rankings on on um, powerlifting watch in my weight class that I was going to try to compete in, which was 275. So... Um, the first ever total I put on the board at, in 2015 was a 1978 total, Damn. which was, which was like my first ever legit one. What number, where did that place you in the rankings? Uh, that total? put me, um, in the first time that put me in, uh, I think it put me at like number like 30, maybe in the all time rankings, like maybe somewhere around there. But probably uh, up near the top spot in the current rankings. Uh, in the current raw wit wraps, um, yeah, I believe um, since it's 2017 and they just started tracking this year's ones, 
I might be number two again because uh, Steve Gentili, um, he totaled higher than me at the Fit Expo. I think me, we might have been the two biggest 275-pounders this year that have competed so far. Other than that, I was number one for a little bit after Boss of Bosses, and then I dropped back down to number two. So been kind of been kind of hovering there. I totaled at 2066 at LA Fit Expo, which happened to be my second best um, my second best um, total to date. So, and I did it in less lifts. My my second best one was the Arnold's, which was a 2045. Um, and I went eight for nine there. I totaled 2045. At the LA Fit Expo, I went four for nine, and I told 2066. So, definitely got a little, a little stronger over the past year for sure. And you know, I was able to total that high in in like half, you know, half the amount of lifts. So, yeah, I first heard about you like I didn't even have you on the rankings. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I didn't even have you on the 2016 rankings. Um, and my friend Casey was like your teammate, my teammate. Yeah. Um, yep. yeah, he's like, yeah, um, so is Steve coming to the meet? I'm like, Steve who? <laughs> like, seriously, <laughs> I didn't even know who you were. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? He just, like, came out of nowhere. And I think yeah, that's how a lot yeah, of people yeah, felt, you know? Um, so, yeah, and then I met you guys at the Olympia. And, but, yeah, seriously, um, I think you're doing amazing things. It's, it's very rare. Like, you see somebody just kind of... Well, you didn't come out of nowhere, but, you know, you weren't, like you said, like you waited for a while to compete in a sanctioned meet, and nobody really knew who you were. Yeah, I mean, I had, like, um, I was kind of building my name up here in Chicago, you know, like I would uh, I would, I would, would do the uh, expos here, the like the Fit Expo here, and hang out with guys that ran booths and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, a few people knew who I was, because at that point I was already deadlifting like 800 pounds, and like, you know, that was like, uh, I feel like it's more and more common now, but um, I feel like at that time it was kind of like on a more rare side, so it was always like, you know, who's this dude that could... The only people that were deadlifting 800 pounds were like the 308s in multiplay. Right, yeah, so they were just like, you know, who the hell is this guy, just basically came out of nowhere, like... Basically, you know, that's kind of what I did. You know, people knew me locally from the gyms and stuff just because I'd be like the strongest guy in the commercial gym. You know, I never worked out at a powerlifting gym um, until until recently in like my training career, just just to help me kind of uh, push it a little further and work with better equipment. But, um, you know, I, I came out my first ever total 1978. Then I I qualified for the Arnold's in uh, 2016. For the so I was at the Arnold's and um, for the XPC and I ended up like going from 1978 to 2045 um, like right away and then I did another I did another meet which was the Fit Expo in Chicago and uh, I totaled 1973 there and that was I used that as a warm up to the Boss of Bosses and I kept telling myself like you know I'm gonna go to the Boss of Bosses like I'm gonna compete I wasn't invited you know I, I competed in the non-invite day and I was like I'm gonna go there and basically kind of show everyone you know who I am and what I do and uh, at that time I had just started working with Josh Bryant so I it was my first ever coach as well and I mean he took me from my best 2045 total to going to 2133 raw so um to me, I mean, that was a huge, huge, I mean, even like Dan Green and they were just like, you know, <clears throat> they were like, who the fuck are you? You know, where the hell did you come from? A few guys had known who I was like Larry Wheels and, uh, you know, some guys that we just went back and forth with on Instagram that I had never actually met. But um, when I competed on the non-invite day, um, Dan and the rest of them were like, you know, you know, I went to the banquet after everything and to find out that I totaled the highest on the non-invite day. And like the third highest on the out of all the invited lifters that were all guys that are well established in powerlifting. They're just like, you know, holy shit. So Dan told me, you know, that he planned on inviting me back again. And uh, they actually paid me some money at the uh, at the um, banquet, which I wasn't ready for at all because they gave me the best lifter award, too. So that's incredible. I had no idea. I thought you lifted on the invite day. I did. This was the first year I didn't go. But uh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Oh no. That's nuts. So who are you most looking forward to competing against at the US Open? Um at the US Open, um 
I'm actually looking forward to compete against uh, Zaheer, even though, like, you know, there's no strength comparison amongst us. But I guess it's any anybody's game that day. And he'll be walking squats at. Yeah, if he, as long as he doesn't bomb his freaking squats, you know what I mean? Like, and he hits that total that he wants. Oh, man, that's going to be ridiculous. But I know he's, uh, I mean, much stronger, much more established. But Is he in your weight class? Yeah, but just walk him lift you know i mean he gets me psyched up you know and i i like uh me and him like to talk shit to each other on instagram so we go back and forth awesome yeah so that'll be fun um you know uh meeting up with him uh also competing against andy wong um he always andy every time every since i've known him he's always competed in sleeves and i've always been in rap so um you know andy's squad is just fucking ridiculous um in sleeves so i don't know what it's going to be like with the wraps on uh, that might be kind of a scary thought, but um, I w- our bench and our deadlifts are about the same. So that's going to be, I, I feel like if one of us, you know, hits all our squats or, or, you know, misses one that could, and that could put us really competitive against each other. Who do you think, like, who do you think is going to take it in that weight class? Like apart from yourself, like who do you think has got a good shot? Um, I'm, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, I want to say myself is going to walk away with everything, you know, but of course. Um, I, I want to say that it's going to probably be between Andy and Zaheer, maybe. Yeah. I think those two, I mean, I mean, those are just freaks, you know what I mean? Um, and I guess it's anybody's day though, you know what I mean? So as long as nobody fucks up what they came there to do, then that's, it's going to be, it's going to be quite the excitement. That's for sure. I can't wait. You think Andy's got a good shot besides yourself at uh, best lifter? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I would say besides Zaheer, I would say Andy's probably um, one of the bigger uh, guys I'm going against. So, so apart from uh, apart from the obvious uh, forty grand take home, what what was appealing about this to me too, or was it just the money? Star studded. <laughs> um, no, you know what? Obviously, the money is one thing. You know, what I mean, because of all the uh, you know, if you know some of my back history or. Listen to some of my other interviews, you'll know, like, you know, some of the hardships I've been through and kind of what I'm still going through, um, you know, so kind of have it in my mindset on, you know, maybe I could, you know, turn around, turn my life around for one second. You know what I mean? Um, the other thing basically was, uh, I mean, what I was most excited about was being in the same room with like people that when I was starting out, like, I mean, I paid attention to what they did and I idolized them at one point. And even try to emulate some of these guys and girls, you know, and and like just being in the same atmosphere in the same room and being considered one of the best powerlifting athletes uh, in the country and the world um, all on the same world. I think that that definitely hypes me up the most. So, yeah. What's the best piece of powerlifting advice you've ever been given? And who was it Uh, from? Uh. Don't shit uh, well, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Um, it, it didn't come directly from a power lifter, but like from somebody that it's something that I've always kind of held on to. One of my uncles gave me actually it's it's a bookmark and it's just a simple quote by Winston Churchill. And I put it in some of my stuff all the time, but it just simply says never, never, never quit. So, you know, this is like one thing that like I'm talented at. I've been good at. And that's, so one thing I have is drive, you know what I mean? Like all the shit that I've been through in my life, I've never given up on anything. So, and, uh, definitely not going to end now, you know what I mean? So. I love that quote. I've actually never heard it before. I've never seen any of your stuff as yeah, much as like I'm on Instagram. I'm not on there a lot. Like it's mostly my assistant cause I'm so busy, but I fucking love that. And that reminds me like of my husband, he's a Marine and he's doing some really tough training right now. Yeah, it's so it's so simple, you know, but it has a big impact, you know. And then, uh, and then another one's one of my favorite quotes, and it comes from me. I made it up. It's actually stitched on the inside of my belt. Um, it says, "Train until you feel like you're about to die, and then train some more." But, yeah, so that's that's actually stitched on the inside of my belt. So, so why don't you tell us like what role Lauren plays in your powerlifting, and because I know it's a big one. <laughs> So when I met when I met Lauren, actually, I wasn't uh, what I consider like an established powerlifter. I was still kind of dabbling in the sport and trying to figure out my, uh, you know, my way through it. Um, I was just coming out of another relationship, 
and uh, when I met Lauren. Um, and when I met her, um, you know, we basically, we instantly clicked, you know, right away right. Um, with similar mindset and passion for um, not necessarily the same sport at the time, but like, you just know, training yeah, just like training in general. Yeah, the lifestyle. And that's somebody that I've, I felt that I could like uh, level with easily, you know. Um, so the first couple of powerlifting meets I did that Lauren was there. Um, she wasn't uh, like on stage like you see her now doing everything um, because uh, me and a training partner that I was training with at the time, we, we, we kind of had our own dynamic. But she was there extremely supportive, you know, basically – helping me out, doing things what I need. She was there for all the training sessions Kinda and like stuff. That, well, and like, like the, the, the errand, the errand girl sometimes, yeah. like, can you get me this? Can you do that? You know, um, making sure, all right, do we have a cooler packed? What kind of snack should we get? You know, um, making sure uh, he, simple things like gear check. Okay, do you have this? Do you have that? Yeah. Um, just, just, me, just being there for me and making sure that, you know, that I was taken care of um, when I needed to be, you know, when the focus was on me. Um, and then kind of when the other, when my training partner and I kind of fizzled out a little bit and we stopped training so much, I mean, Lauren really stepped up into that role, you know, and definitely at the boss of bosses, that's kind of where she definitely shined, um, where we both kind of shine. So, um, I didn't have anybody to, you know, wrap my knees a certain way or like just get me hyped up and get me motivated, get me pumped up. So uh, she really stepped into that, like, really aggressively, you know what I mean? Uh, she's gotten way better at hyping me up, that's for sure, <laughs> as, as you've seen, you know? You know? She's a fucking, um, definitely yeah. the best hype man I've ever seen. I have not, I've been handling and coaching for years, and I I very rarely see, like, a proper female handler. And Lauren, I can tell you, like, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. What records do you think are most likely to be broken at the U.S. Open? I want to say possibly in the 275, maybe the all-time um, uh, total, lift total. Um, I think some, I want to say probably some squat and some bench records probably there too. I don't know. The deadlift's kind of high. I don't know anybody that's really creeping on that too much yet. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking some uh, all-time lift totals are probably going to be broke there for sure. So the heavyweight, you're going to be lifting on Saturday. The women and the lightweight men will be lifting on Sunday. Um, which uh, which females are you looking forward to watching? Yeah, uh, which females, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, kidding. Um, I'm looking forward to see uh, Steph Powell lift. Um, I got to see, I got to train with her at the Olympia and at um, Iron Addicts. Um, who else? Uh, is Shelby Talon there? Yes. Yeah, Shelby Talon. That'll be fun to see. Um, and definitely, uh, I'd like to see, I think Susan Salazar is going to be there, right? That's right. Yeah, So, and Susan's one of my teammates. And, you know, just from running into her at, like, all the expos and shit, you know, she's, she's so just nice. a great, yeah, she's just an awesome, awesome chick. So, love to see that. Tell me about your name, for the Forsaken Warrior. How did that come about? Uh, so, it's nothing really amazing, but um, Forsaken Warrior actually was a company that I was starting. Um, basically people associated me with the company I started. So I was never set out to be Forsaken Warrior, but they knew me as like, that's the guy who sold Mark's Bell stuff, the company Forsaken Warrior Strength. That's what it was. So, um, and then I just became that. So, well, hopefully you're going to walk away with 40 grand and, uh, get that shit oh, yeah. rolling again. Yeah. I could get a, I could get a new car. So, cause I just smashed my other ones. <laughs> you get a lot for 40 yeah, grand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, we want to know what defines success for you. Is it the money? Is it a certain total? Is it going to be that deadlift record? What is it for you? Um. Oh man, that's kind of a deep question there. Um, it's definitely not the money. Although the money is nice, but um, I guess just uh, what defines success, I guess, is doing well enough to be considered uh, one of the greatest powerlifters, uh, you know, in the sport. Well, you so. you already are. <laughs> So you want to give some shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, definitely. So um, definitely want to shout out to Adam and Noah at Eight Man Strong. <clears throat> um, those guys, um, since I, I met them in Chicago and, you know, they uh, figured out who I was. Um, I mean, they've been nothing but great towards me. They've, they've done so much for me. Um, and, you know, I really appreciate those guys. Really love those dudes. Um, 
uh, Mark Bell and Slingshot and Silent Mike and Smokey. Those guys take care of me a lot. Um, they definitely make sure I'm always got my shit, all my gear. Um, I mean, they're constantly sending me stuff, um, helping me out with things. Uh, Get Diesel Nutrition, uh, Chuck Diesel. Um, Chuck is a uh, local supplement company, and uh, he sponsored me and Lauren right from the start. Um, and he's a, he's just a great dude, very very <laughs> awesome dude, very supportive of us. Um, and also, uh, I got a few more, so so hold tight. Uh, Kombucha. Mm, um, his name is uh, Matt Lancor. Uh, homemade. He makes his own products here in Chicago. Um, Kombucha products, which are probiotic the probiotic prebiotic drink um and then also uh luigi fagiani with buffalo beard company is keeping this uh thing looking nice and sweet mm. <laughs> yeah. i didn't even know luigi had that yeah he just pretty much started it so oh cool yeah oh there's a there's one more sponsor i gotta i gotta talk about it i really forgot about but they do a lot for me is uh my mighty meals they they're keeping me nice and fat and ready always to train so I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Thank All right, Gracie, you. Take Look it forward easy. to seeing you again. Yep. See you guys. All right. Bye. All right.